Hi and welcome to the module quiz practice here. This is from page 197 in the textbook. And it's all about module six. Number one, Science Club went on a two-day field trip. The first day, the members paid $60 for transportation and $15 per ticket to the planetarium. The second day, they paid $95 for transportation plus $12 per ticket to the geology museum, write an expression to represent the total cost for two days for the N members of the club. Okay, so we have N members. We're gonna use the variable N. And $60 for transportation plus $95. It's gonna be, I'm gonna write this on a piece of paper here. So for number one, it's 60 plus 95, all of that times N. And then we have plus $15 per ticket and $12 per ticket. So plus 15 plus 12. And together, well, that's a 155. 155. Oh, per ticket. <laughs> this goes right here with the per ticket. Sorry about that. And uh, that's 155 plus, uh, what, that's going to be 27. Usually we write the variable term first. So that's, that is correct. However, usually it's written this way, 27 N plus 155. And so that would be number one. Number two, we have uh, H plus 9.7 equals negative 9.7. I would have to subtract 9.7 from both sides of the equal sign. And we have H is equal to, this is a 14, that's 18, 19, negative 19.4. Number three is uh, what? Negative three fourths plus P equals one half. To solve this one, I'm gonna have to add three fourths to both sides of the equal sign. And just like here, that was zero, this is gonna be zero, and P is now isolated. And one half plus three fourths, uh, well, common denominators are necessary. That's two fourths plus three fourths, that would give me five fourths total. Or you could, and, and five fourths is totally acceptable. You could make it one and a half, but I'll just keep it at five fourths. Okay, number four is negative uh, 15 equals negative 0.2k. Negative 15 equals zero, negative 0.2k. I have to, since has been multiplied, I have to divide by negative 0.2, the exact same number. Those cancel. Divide this side by negative 0.2. And negative divided by negative is positive. How many point twos fit, fit into 15? Well, let's see, five point twos fit into one. And five times 15 is uh, one, two, three, four, five. I think it's 75, so it should be 75. Yeah, so divide that by that, and you get 75 equals K. Number five is, let's see, that is Y over negative point three equals one sixth y over negative three equals one sixth. Uh, to solve for y, and this since that's being divided by negative three, I have to multiply both sides by negative three. Let me rewrite this here so I have a little bit more space. I multiply this side by negative three. That gets these to cancel. I multiply this side by negative three. Uh, or I could think of this as negative three over one. And now I multiply one times negative three is negative three, and six times one is six, and y equals negative three six, which does simplify to three six simplifies to one half. So that's equal to negative one half. Okay, number six. Let's see what number six says. Uh, that is that negative two thirds times m. So that is 
negative 2 thirds times m equals negative 12 equals negative 12. Um, let's see. I I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to write this over here. Negative 2 thirds times m equals negative 12. I'm going to multiply so both since I have this division by 3, I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. So multiply both sides by 3. And these would then cancel. That's the whole purpose of this. And I have negative 2m equals negative 36. Then, since that's being multiplied by negative 2, I will divide by negative 2. These will cancel. And m equals, that's going to be a positive. And 36 divided by 2, that is 18. And yeah, that's it. I'm checking my answers as I go. I have all the answers here, and I'm just checking along as I go. Okay, number seven. Oh, did I skip five? No, I did five. Great, number seven. That'll go up here. Number seven is 2.4 divided by negative t over 4.5. So 2.4 equals negative t over 4.5. Just to make sure I wrote it down right, yeah, I did. So, uh, since this is division, I will multiply. And you know what? Let's just do this all in one step. I know that that negative is smack in the middle of the problem right there, but really, it can go top, middle, or bottom. If I put it on the bottom, then that would force me to do everything in one step. If I put that in the bottom, now it's going to be multiplying both sides by negative 4.5, which, you know, really, when you when you see a situation like this, you could just say, hey, I got to multiply those two together. And that's what I'm going to choose to do right now. So, and when I multiply them, I'm going to end up with a negative. So I'll have t equals negative something. Now, 2.4 times 4.5, that's 20, 12, 0, 16, 8, 9, 0, 8, 10. And move the decimal, oops, <laughs> move the decimal one, two times. Looks like it's negative 10.80. And we don't need the zero at the end, so negative 10.8. Number eight. Uh, ooh, a word problem. Jerry started doing sit-ups every day. First day he did 15 sit-ups. Every day after that, he did two more sit-ups than he had done the previous day. Uh, today, Jerry did 33 sit-ups. Write an equation that could be used to solve it, that could find, that could be solved to find the number of days Jerry has been doing sit-ups, uh, not counting the first day. So this is how I would start. Uh, he did 15 sit-ups. So let's start with uh, on number eight. He did 15 sit-ups. And uh, every day after that, he did two more sit-ups than he had done the previous day. So after that, he did two times uh, more sit-ups than he did the previous day. So two times, uh, is there a variable that they give us here? Uh, how about D for days? Uh, so. D for days. And in the end, uh, today he did uh, 33 sit-ups. So uh, he did 33. So 15 plus 2 times uh, each day uh, equals to today is 33 days. So then we could find how many days uh, he's been doing the sit-ups. That's our equation. That's our answer to number 8. Okay, number nine, two-step equations. We have 5n plus 8 equals 43. 5n plus 8 equals 43. And first, I'm going to subtract 8. 5n equals uh, 35, I believe. And then n equals 35 divided by 5, which is 7. Okay, number 10, we have uh, y over 6 minus 7 equals 4. 
y over 6 minus 7 equals 4. And just check and make sure I wrote it down right. I would add 7 to both sides. And that is y over 6 equals, that is 11. And I would, <laughs> like I saw up here, I'm just going to multiply them. I would do the same thing down here. I'm just going to see, well, I just multiply 6 times 11. And that y is going to be 66. Number 11, 11 is 8w minus 15 equals 57, 8w minus 15 equals 57. Okay, uh, I would add 15 to both sides using inverse operations. Well, oh, that was an awful line that I made. 8w equals um, 62, I believe. And I'm going to check to make sure that I have uh, 7 plus 5 is 12. Yeah. Oh, 72. 72. And then uh, it's going to be W. Since that's multiplication, I divide. 72 divided by 8 is 9. Number 12. Uh, I can... Um, Oh, number 12 is, so 12 is g over 3 plus 11 equals 25. So g over 3 plus 11 equals 25, just to make sure. Yep, got it. So for this one, I would subtract 11. And I have g over 3 equals 25 minus 11. That is... Uh, 14 and then once again that whole thing strikes again where I see that structure right there I'm just going to multiply those two and uh, 14 times 3 and the reason why I'm multiplying the two is because this is division and you use inverse operations to get the answer there 14 times 3 that's uh that is 42 number 13 13 is f over 5 minus 2.2 .2 equals negative 2.5. That is, just to make sure, we have 13 right here. f over 5 minus 2.2. Okay, great. So for this one, I'm going to add 2.2 .2 inverse operations. f over 5, f divided by 5, I should say. Now, negative 2.5 plus 2.5, that is 0. And just like I multiplied here, I'm doing that for the same reason here. I'm 5 times 0. f should be equal to 0. And that is not the case. Oh, oh, wow. I made a little mistake here. Look at that. I wrote, I should have written 2.2 .2 right there instead of 2.5. I wasn't thinking clearly. So 2.2, .2, and these are different signs, so I have to subtract them, and the answer is going to be negative because 2.5 is bigger than 2.2. .2. So let's see. That's 0 0.3. Now, 0 0.3 times 5, uh, negative 0 0.3 times 5. Now, 3 times 5 is 15. And so that's 15, but 0.3, so it's going to be 1.5, and negative times positive is negative, negative 1.5. And number 14 here for module 6, this is negative, let's see, number 14 is negative 1 fourth times the quantity p plus 16, and that all equals 2. Okay. So solving for p, we have um, we have to. Ah, boy, I'm I'm stuck here. We we could distribute all this. Yeah, it's fine. Or <laughs> I have two ways of doing this. I, I'll show you two different ways. I don't know which way you'll like better. I'm not even sure which way I like better. But in this one, I could distribute. Distribute this. This is negative one fourth p 
and then uh, negative times positive is negative. So I'll write it as minus. Um, and then uh, 1 fourth times 16 is 4. You know, really, it's 16 divided by 4 is 4 equals 2. And then I will add 4. Negative 1 fourth p equals 6. I'll multiply both sides by 4. And these cancel. I have negative 1 p equals 24. And now I have to divide by negative 1. And those cancel. p is equal to negative 24. Um, OK, that's one way of doing it. Another way to do it is you could just start in with, uh, since that's being multiple, since these two things are being multiplied, I could start trying to eliminate this right here. I could multiply by four. So th this step down here, I can do it right up here. And that would get these to cancel. This side has to be multiplied by four. So I have negative one, negative one is left over here, times the quantity p plus 16 equals 16. Hmm. Okay, I'm pausing for a moment because I'm making sure that everything's good. I, if I distribute the negative 1, then I would have negative 1p, and then this is negative 16. And I realize I've been pausing here, but I don't know why I wrote 8 right there. Look at that. Yeah, that's supposed to be a 4, isn't it? four and then two times I think I was thinking ahead right there and then two times four is eight and I'm gonna feel better about this so we have multiply both sides by four we have this okay negative one and this is gonna be uh, negative uh, negative one times 16 is negative 16 or that can count as minus 16 equals uh, eight then I'm gonna add 16 to both sides Negative 1p equals, uh, that's going to be 24. And then I divide both sides by negative 1. And I get p equals negative 24. So it's the same answer. I did it two different ways. Whichever way connects with you, you're welcome to use it. And our last one, number 15. How can you use two-step equations to represent a uh, and solve real-world uh, problems? And my response to this is, well, this is what you could do. You could analyze the situation to determine how to model it using a two-step equation. You would then solve the equation, and then you would interpret the solution in the given situation. And that's what you got to know. Thanks for watching uh, my take on the module quiz uh, from module six in GoMath. Go